Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day, a great weekend. And for my main buddy, Game Time Brian, and anybody who is working outside, it's a little bit cooler today. It was 9,900 degrees here yesterday. I think it's going to be 93 here today so it's a little bit cooler but not much so please take care of yourself and it looks like a two possibly three uh category hurricane may be hitting the texas coast somewhere around corpus christi um, possibly monday so get prepared for all that stuff because we want to make sure all of you guys are here with us so we're in the silly season right now, good people. This is the silly season. There ain't much going on but the rent. And um, it's like on a daily basis, we have the different controversies out there. Um, the funny thing is, is uh, or it's not funny, we had the whole Dak Prescott situation where he was wearing a soft cast. And it ended up being that they're saying that it was nothing, just a little minor hiccup. He's good to go. People in the organization have been talking and saying nothing to worry about. So don't get your panties in a bunch or anything like that. It's okay. It's okay is what they're telling us. <sighs> then we have something interesting is Cole Beasley who likes hot sauce, okay? We got Lola, who's Miss Hot Sauce. We got Cole Beasley, who's Mr. Hot Sauce, who basically is throwing shade kind of at C.D. Lamb. And I quote this. Give me 180 targets off the couch, and I'll eclipse 1,000 yards. Stop looking at stats and checking the tape as far as getting open goes. I'm confident I did it that with the best of them. So here's what we're going to see if this argument holds water. If you did, okay, so here, here's one of those matrix. You can have um, yards per target is a stat. Doesn't mean how many you caught yard average per catch, yard average per route or target. So that means every time you went out and the quarterback threw the ball to you, how many receptions did you come down with and what is the average? And so here's the thing. If you end up having a lot of drops, that will hurt the average. Because let's say you catch one pass for 20 yards, you catch a pass for 10 yards, and then the third pass, you dropped. Your yard per target would be 10 yards, even though you had that 20 and that zero. That's the average of it. So hypothetically, if you had 180 targets, okay, 180 targets to get to 1,000 yards, that's only 5.5 yards average per catch. So, yeah, he probably could get 5.5 yards per catch off the couch. Now, hypothetically, though, if we take the best season, there's two of them where he averaged – Nine yards, nine yards per reception, um, excuse me, yards per target. If you take that nine and you multiply that out on it, then now you're talking about 1,600 yards, you know, about 120 yards less than C.D. Lamb's average on his best year. Now, I don't know that he can get off the couch and have his best year again. Um, I don't think that that's going to be the case, but probably should still be decent, you know, uh, yeah, so there's that. So we got that shade being thrown. Now here's an interesting thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of put this out here, because we've got Eagle fans that are going crazy because like yeah we got Saquon Barkley you know we're headed for the Super Bowl and things you know we've got of course we got C.D. Lamb and you know should we pay him because then that'll help us to get to the Super Bowl thing. But here's something that's kind of crazy. Here's something that's kind of crazy is it seems like, and maybe I'm wrong, we had Zeke Elliott in his early years, incredible back. We didn't win the Super Bowl. We had, um, damn, 
what's his name, 2014, 1,800 yards, won one playoff game. You have a guy like Adrian Peterson. Actually, let me look at Adrian Peterson Let's see. Because Adrian Peterson... I'm not sure that he was actually a win in a playoff game. Adrian Peterson, who has probably been the most dynamic back we've had in a very, very long time, because we're talking about Adrian Peterson having 1,300 yards, 1,700 yards, almost 1,400 yards, 1,300 yards, 2,097, a 1,200-yard season, a 1,400-yard season, a 1,000-yard season with uh, the Commanders. And let's look at playoffs. Wow. He played in five playoff games, being one of the best running backs in football. Um, his average in the playoffs, this is kind of interesting. 2008, 4.2 yards. And 2009, 3.6. In 2012... 4.5, and in 2015, two yards. His regular season, his playoff average was 3.6 yards. His career rushing average per yard hang on. This thing, it is, it, there's so many years here, it's crazy. It was 4.6. 4.6 throughout his career. But come playoffs, it dropped a yard. Does that seem mystifying to you guys? Because you could look at Zeke Elliott and say, he drops by two when it comes to playoffs. And so here's the thing that's kind of interesting as we go through. And for the Eagles, they say, hey, we got Saquon. You know, we're going to win. Now, I will say the Giants, although you're a much better team than the Giants, they didn't do much with Saquon throughout his career being really great. You can't look at him and say he's the same back he was. He's not Christian McCaffrey right now. But be that as it may, they do have a much better team. And as we go through and we look at C.D. Lamb, the last time a great wide receiver, a great wide receiver, I think won the, in the Super Bowl, I think was with New England, I think in 2015. So as you go through and you put out your resources, is that the two places that you really should be putting it? Tariq Hill goes to Miami. Pat Mahomes doesn't skip a beat. He goes to Miami. Miami still hasn't won a playoff game. So that's where the question is. And don't don't get me wrong. Don't get don't get it twisted. Because believe me, we need C D Lamb. We need C D Lamb. I'm not gonna try and say we don't, because we do. But as we go through and we look at paying guys, the teams that are winning Super Bowls actually have better tight ends. The tight end is key. Tight end is bigger than a great running back. And don't don't get it twisted like I'm saying, you don't need a running back. You do need a running back. But when we look at the top-tier running backs that you would expect to be doing great things, they're not. Saquon's been in two playoff games. They won one. Adrian Peterson's been in like five and I don't think there's a win there. You think about a guy like Frank Gore. Boom. You think about Derrick Henry. I don't think Derrick Henry, I don't think the Titans got a playoff win. They've been the number one seed. They've won a lot of games, but they don't win Super Bowls. Now, here's the thing that is kind of interesting to me is as we go through as we go through and we're constantly told, you know what, the Cowboys should let Dak walk and get Derek Carr. Or we're here, oh, go get Kirk Cousins. Or, you know, um, 
you know, any number of guys. But here's where it's kind of crazy. In the last uh, century, let's go through the winning quarterbacks of teams. They have either their great quarterback or they have a historic defense. You can look at the 2000 Baltimore Ravens, Trent Dilfer, one of the best defenses in the history of football with Tony Saragusa and, of course, Ray Ray and the whole gang, Terrell Suggs. And, I mean, that, or, you, know, that, that, you know, Ed Reed. and They were just incredible. Um, 2001, Tom Brady. We know about Tom Brady. 2002, Brad Johnson, historic defense. Uh, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, incredible defense. Ben Roethlisberger, great quarterback. Drew Brees, great quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, Eli Manning, great defense. Joe Flacco, again, historic defense. Russell Wilson, historic defense, balanced team, good running back, really good. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Nick Foles. That one is the one that you look at and say, hmm, they were a loaded team. They had a great offensive line. And uh, Carson Wentz got them in a position to be able to coast. And they had a system that worked perfectly for Nick Foles. And Nick Foles played great going down the stretch. And that's the thing about Nick Foles was Nick Foles was always kind of streaky and really good for about, you know, six games or so. As a full-time starter, never was. And then after Nick Foles, this is where it's kind of crazy because look at the list. Since Nick Foles, or actually we can go from 20, let, let's, let's go since Joe Flacco in 2012. Russell Wilson, who has been one of the top-tier quarterbacks for it, even last year wasn't that bad. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. You got the aberration of uh, Nick Foles, Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, Tom Brady. Matthew Stafford, Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes. You don't have journeyman quarterbacks that win Super Bowls, guys. You don't have guys that are okay or average guys that are winning Super Bowls. Now, that's not to say that's the only thing that you need because you got Aaron Rodgers out there who's been there all of those years too, who's been one of the top-tier quarterbacks. You can win the Super Bowl with a great quarterback if you have a team around them. But a great quarterback by themselves will not win the Super Bowl. And here's the conundrum. So some people say, just get rid of Dak and we'll start all over. Well, when you look at the list, and as we're going through with all of these quarterbacks of the last, you know, 23 years, they're not just bums that are winning Super Bowls. Those guys are few and far between. So what you have to do is, when you do get a quarterback, is you do have to surround them with talent. Offensive line is key. Good running back, but not necessarily, you know, a bellwether back. Bellwether backs aren't winning Super Bowls. Really good wide receivers and things that you can spread the ball with, but not necessarily, you know, one of the top tier, you know, mega money guys. And that's where we have to look at this because what we end up wanting is we say we want like an all-star team, okay? So you can look down at Miami and say, you know, they got Jalen Waddell. They end up getting Tariq Hill and, you know, all these great players and stuff. But all of that together combined is not winning the Super Bowl. You got a great quarterback in Pat Mahomes. You got a really good defense. You got a great offensive mind. And you have a lot of different guys, including an incredible tight end. And as you go through these lists and you look at these, the thing that you'll see is none of these teams, none of these teams, with the exception of, I could say, maybe the Seattle Seahawks, had great running games. None of them did. None of them had, you know, the top tier wide receiver either. It's kind of crazy, don't you think? So, 
I don't know what the solution is. I know you need to have a capable running game that scares people. I know you have to have several guys that can catch the football so that way you can be balanced. And I know you have to have a defense that can give you the ball back and stop the other team. And that's what we need as far as to win a Super Bowl. We've got some of those parts. we got the quarterback. We just have to get everything else to go around them. Here's the interesting thing with Cam Newton. This whole Cam Newton thing is actually about 20 minutes long that he spent talking about Dak and who you take over Dak and so on. Um, but listening to the beginning argument, I just want to play a little bit more of this so we get a little bit deeper with Cam Newton. Man, it ain't hard to find. I ain't been hiding. They know how to get in contact with me. So if y'all want Boogie to step into Bank of America, King of the Queen, I Come would on. love to bring some motherfucking energy and juice to the motherfucking Ooh. stadium. So you would sit in the chair. Will I? You going to the soccer game. Holla at me. Just I mean, call me. Just call me. I'm I want to call away, bro. Come on. It man. ain't never a 45 minute flight. Four hour drive. Come on. Just now. give me a little gas money. We'll, we'll work all that other stuff out. Yeah. Give me a little steak in the look. I'm a business man. Yeah, come on. Now. Politics is good. Next clip. <laughs> so here we go. Newton's Law. Has Dak earned here we go. the massive payday pick? Mm-hmm. And like, when you really think about what's happening, the quarterbacks who have signed massive deals yeah. uh, from Trevor Lawrence yes, to. Uh, Joe Shiesty, Sean Watson, Deshaun Watson, quarterbacks of like that, like it's only a ticking time bomb until it's Dak's turn. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when you think about it, I got my take. Okay. Bring your clip up. All right. So this clip started a little controversy. Well, let's see what they gotta say. Dak Prescott's on the left. No name quarterbacks on the right. Those two quarterbacks statistically are the same guy, meaning the guy on the right's not better than Dak, Dak's not better than the guy on the right. I want you to see who Dak compares to in real time with real stats in the NFL. Three, two, one, reveal. What's up? Is that real? My What's up? <laughs> What's up? Now press pause Dak right Prescott, there. And if you haven't Dak seen this Prescott clip, is at- go look at the clip. It's not hard to find. Yeah. What I will say to this is that you make or break who you are and who your legacy is by the playoffs. Mm. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But this is the thing. If I were to talk to Dak, right? Okay. Talk to Dak. I would say this. Go for a high signing bonus. Put y'all on game real quick. Brady okay. did it for years. High signing bonus. Keep your base salary low. Mm. Right? What does that do? It doesn't go into the cap. Mm. So you can get a signing bonus of 35, 40 million. Crazy work. Yes, sir. And then just make 2 million a year, which is still crazy work. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You already got your money. I think what Came he's identified and what he's done has already told the organization, like, yo, y'all know what I am, y'all know what I can do. Correct. I just need the pieces in place. Why doing it that way is so beneficial is okay. because he has a guy by the name of uh, Cordell DeMarcus Lamb. I don't yeah. even know what the CD stands for, but I tried, and he going to need his money too. Yeah, he going to need his money. You did. <laughs> That's how you protect him. Okay. Pay that man. Because don't think CD ain't saw Justin Jefferson. Don't think Ooh. CD ain't thinking that. Uh, Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. Don't th- it's all these things yeah. that you All these guys. I, 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 I. I got to get me, me. Okay? You dig? Because I'm seeing you get, get you, you, you. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, Dak. Dakavius. <laughs> Sign a um, large signing bonus. Large signing bonus. And a bonus. low salary. You don't need no more money. Because we just came from. So we already seen what he did pick in 2021. Yep. Huh? Signed for four year, 160. 60. Mm-hmm. What, 66 guaranteed? Y'all want to say 66 guaranteed? 126 guaranteed. Double that, silly man. Dumb ass <laughs> boy. 126 guaranteed with how much signing bonus? 66. So that's already telling me you don't need no money. Mm. You just need to worry about now. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
How do you do that? Cool. We ain't doing what we're doing for free. Okay. Especially when there you know go. somebody else is making more than you and that you better than, but that's just a competitor in you. Mm -hmm. Don't get me started on that. But I'm going to keep the main thing, the main thing. Yeah, the so bad. at the end of the day, you get a large upfront money. Okay. Sign a bonus. And then keep your base salary low. So you can take care of guys like CeeDee Lamb. You can take care of guys like another number two receiver. It may be uh, um, Michael Gallup. Um, it may be another. You got more money yeah. to play with for other players. The That's going to be your so important class. But they got a super squad already. Yeah, they do. But they, but they don't they have, have no to win. They have a super squad. When it counts. That's true. I mean, for the last two to three years. I'm so tired of so, Skip Bayless talking about money. I'm tired of Skip Bayless, too. So the question is, is he correct? Do they have a superstar team and that they just fall short? I don't know. I'm just sitting here looking at those numbers. Those things, actually, it surprised me that Adrian Peterson's numbers had fallen as much as they did because it seems like, you know, the philosophy, I think, has been the problem because I bet you if we go through and we look at most of those running backs, that by the time you have been a bellwether back and you get to the playoffs, you have taken so many hits and your body is just battered and bruised, you're just not as effective. And if you've been relying on having the running game all season and then you don't have it in the playoffs, that hurts. That hurts. And that's one of those things that the Cowboys need to fix. And so we'll see what we do at the moment. You know, I believe the team will be good like they've been the last few years, but I don't know that they have enough to make it deep. I just don't know. I really don't know. And I guess only time will tell. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, any news or anything that happens – as we sit here 61 days away from the season beginning, uh, we'll be sure to bring it to you.